Today's project is the first part of a three-part series. Um, the first part we're going to do here is we're going to bottle or can wild turkey. We're going to bottle the breast meat and the thigh meat and pressure cook it and preserve it that way. Uh, we'll follow that up with a video on how to make some turkey stew or turkey chowder. That'd be part number two. And part number three, we're going to take you through the freeze drying process of the turkey chowder, turkey soup, whatever we end up building out of this preserved bottled turkey. So what we're going to want to do to preserve this turkey is we want to dice it up into cubes. I prefer about an inch cube or thereabouts. So I'm just going to go through here and uh, chop this turkey up into cubes and uh, put it in a bowl right here. And when I get this bowl all this turkey done and we'll start stuffing in the bottles. So as you can see I'm just taking a breast here and I'm going to just dice it and kind of cube it up. And for me I'm going to remove all the fat, any, that, any fat that's on it where I'm going to freeze dry it. I want to have it as lean as possible. Which you'll find on freeze dryers they work great but feet or food that has fat in it you can still freeze dry it but it just has a lot shorter shelf life and okay we've got all of our turkey meat diced up now uh, i've got my jars prepared you just want to do the standard prep on your jars wash them really good hot soapy water rinse them let them uh, dry off they don't need to be in boiling water or anything right before you fill them uh, they're going to be processed in the pressure cooker and that's going to take care of all that. Anyway, uh, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to add a half a teaspoon of canning salt. Uh, I like to add a half a teaspoon of chicken bouillon to mine as well. Um, I won't add any liquid to it. It'll produce its own liquid. It takes about 13 ounces to fill a jar of meat. Uh, we're going to do four at a time just so we don't have too many. I'll add my half a teaspoon of salt to each one. And of course my half a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. This is just what I like to do. You can add whatever you want to flavor your meat. If you have some special thing that you like, there's nothing that stops you from doing that. I'm sure we're at least gonna fill six jars. So let's go ahead and prep six jars. Okay, now I'm ready to add the meat. Um, I've got thigh meat and I've got breast meat kind of mixed together here. It doesn't really matter. Um, I like to mix mine up just a little bit. So I want to put his meat in there. And what I'm going to do is you want to put that to within one inch of the top. I've got a cup that fits just perfectly. Um, you want to squeeze as much of that air out of there as you can get. And you want an inch of head space on these as it's going to grow just a little bit as it processes. So just get that down to where it's tight to about an inch of the top. Do one more of these. You can watch me do one more and then I'll pause the film and I need to bore you with filling them all. Anyway, we'll push that down and it'll try to get all the voids of air out of that. This cup, these are small mouth jars. I like doing my meat in large mouth jars, but I just happen to be out of large mouth jars, so regular mouth will work just fine. Just try and get all that air out of there you can. All right, I ended up with seven jars. I think my canner will hold eight on one level, but we'll just do seven to start with. Um, I've got my lids warmed up here and boiled them. You can still ring on there. You don't want to make these super tight, just, just barely tighten that lid up. Because as these things process, they're going to build pressure and uh, they'll release some, some pressure out of those jars. So I have a Presto canner. 
Um, in that, I've put in three quarts of water and two tablespoons of vinegar. Vinegar just helps with the hard water buildup. And my cooker is one that has a pressure gauge. Sometimes they have a weight that goes on them and will rock. You want to just make sure that your vent is uh, functioning and that you look through that hole. You can see light through that hole. Uh, let's see if I can get in there. So my hole is clear. I'm going to check your gasket. The gasket all looks good. So I'm ready to start putting in my uh, product. So we'll come over here and we'll grab one jar at a time. And we'll fill that, we'll put them all in. So I've put my lid on and that's just gonna build pressure now. Uh, we won't put our weight on until this thing has boiled and blown steam for 10 minutes. Once it blows for 10 minutes, then you can put the weight on and it'll start to build the pressure. One thing I might say is you gotta be careful when you put your bottles in there. If you put ice, ice cold meat in with a hot water, you'll end up breaking bottles. So I try to get my meat a little to the room temperature and uh, I don't put in boiling hot water in my canner uh, to start with because I don't want to crack those bottles in there. So we'll pick back up here when this thing starts blowing steam. All right, we've been going for probably about eight or nine minutes with the uh, weight on and we're just now getting to 12 pounds. So now, I'm going to turn the heat down. Um, you don't want to turn down too low to begin with or it'll drop. You want that to stay boiling, you got to slowly work your way down um, and get it to stay at 12 pounds. It's kind of challenging sometimes. Uh, you have to turn the fire down a little bit. And I started out on an extra large burner. I usually move it over to a smaller burner to hold the temperature. You can see we're at about 12 and a half right now. And that's all right. We'll just work our way to 12. Once I got to 12, I set my timer for 75 minutes. So we'll just let this stew and brew and do its magic for 75 minutes, and then we'll turn the heat off. All right, just checking in. We got about 23 minutes left. And we've had to go from the large burner to the next size large, all the way to the back. That's a very small flame back there. You can see right now we're sitting at about 13 pounds, a little under 13. So it's kind of finicky, but we got her adjusted and it's holding pressure and we'll be done here shortly. Well, timer's just going off. Looks like we're holding at about 12 and a half pounds. So we'll turn that timer off and we'll kill the heat. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. You can see the pressure gauge is at the bottom. You'll also notice here that this is, is uh, released. So we know it's not under pressure. You don't wanna open this up until this is dropped down and there's no pressure inside. To double check, what I'll do is I'll take off the weight and you'll see that there's no, no pressure came out, so. All right, so as you open this, you wanna open the lid so that it faces away from you like that. Cause you see that releases a lot of steam out of there. You don't wanna catch that in the face. We've got it open. Take your bottle removers and just set them out here to cool. The other thing you want to do right off when you take them out is go ahead and uh, tighten those lids down. They're already starting to seal, but that will uh, that'll uh, help them seal. So they're not going to get any any air. They shouldn't get any air in there, but so I've taken those out and you'll see that every one of those is still in there cooking, just a boiling away. They're very hot. And what I like to do is I like to pull a, a towel over the top of these, just like this. What that does is it keeps any cool drafts or anything off of them, just lets them cool. Well, so, so that's part one, first video of a three part series. Um, that's pretty much how you preserve a wild turkey. Pretty simple. Raw pack method. Um, if you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe, 
and be looking for the second part of this series on turkey stew or turkey chowder. Thanks for watching.